All right, in our statics review videos, we have finished course overview and objects. Now we want to start tackling loads. This is actually going to take a couple videos because there were a lot of different things we talked about with loads. This one we're going to talk about point forces, specifically the classification of manipulation of forces, components versus projections, and friction. Friction is nothing other than a special case of a point force. That's it. So as soon as that becomes clear, friction becomes easier. Classification of forces comes into three things, magnitude and direction, magnitude along a line, and Cartesian form. This is stuff we've gone over over and over again. But it's still a good thing to remember when we're talking about a review, because in the overall scheme of things, the two questions are, what object have you got and what loads act on it? Once you've got your loads, you need to ask yourself, how are your forces given to you? Are they given in magnitude and direction, magnitude along the line in Cartesian form? Beyond that, the manipulation of them becomes interesting because while we certainly can move everything to Cartesian form and work with it from there, sometimes what you really want to do is leave it in magnitude and direction and work with it with the law of sines and cosines. Any of these forms, including this one, you can add forces in without moving to Cartesian form. So just bear that in mind. This is our general overview of how this works. Notice that the arrows go both ways. No matter where you start, you can get there. So we have the general, here are our trig functions. Here are our i's, j's, and k's, magnitude along a line. Remember that the slope of a line, if you have a slope of a line, it's simply rise over run. Those are the things you want to remember. In 3D, we have the same options, but it's much less common that you will use magnitude and direction without changing into Cartesian form. Once you get to 3D, this is pretty much where we live. From magnitude along a line, you, you're, you're going to find your position vector unit vector multiply. This is, I've given you two points, and I know that there's a force that lies along that line connecting those two points. A good clue here is that these numbers are often given to you in units of distance, not units of force. Position vector, take one, one point minus the other, two minus from, please, two minus from, and then divide by the magnitude of the position vector and multiply by the magnitude of the force. That gives you these numbers. These are your i's, j's, and k's. That is the most common way of specifying a vector in 3D. But there are also magnitude and direction options. In magnitude and direction, you have two different choices. You could have something given to you as a projection in a plane or direction cosines. Projection in a plane, the key thing to look for is this extra line. And note that this angle is determined between that extra line and the axis, the x-axis. That means you've got a projection in a plane. Draw these two triangles, the flat ones, so this is phi, this is your component along the y-axis, this is your component along the x-axis, and this is your projection. Down here you've got this triangle where you've got, this is your z component, that's t, and here's theta. Those are the original notions of how to deal projection in a plane. Direction cosines, the key thing is that you do not have that t in there anywhere, and all three of these angles are measured with respect to, from, between, the vector itself and the axis. All three of these are right triangles. Remember we talked about that. So this angle down here is a right angle, this angle is a right angle, this angle is a right angle. Which means that each of these components, this one and this one, like this one, these components are the projections onto the axes, projection of a force onto a line. That gives you all of this A cosine alpha, A cosine beta, A cosine gamma stuff. As long as you remember this extra formula, because you're only going to be given two of the three of these. The next topic, we're in a slightly different topic now, is to deal with what a component is, what a projection is. Components, whether you have orthogonal axes or you don't have orthogonal axes, these are all the situations where you have two forces, one along the x-axis, one along the y-axis, and you add them together using vectors to get your, your f vector. It doesn't matter to me whether the x and y axes are perpendicular. The nice thing about this is that I can use fx equals f sine alpha, or cosine alpha. 
I can't do that with the general force components. Here you're going to have to use the law of sines and cosines on this triangle because it's not a right triangle. Projections are always a right angle. I don't care whether your axes are orthogonal or not. Here fx is the projection of f onto the x-axis. fx and fy are the components. They are both. Here I have fx, fu and fv are the components of f, not in the Cartesian axis system, in the uv axis system. And But here you see F U perpendicular is the projection onto the x-axis. So this is a right angle. This one's not. We do note as a simplistic part here that this projection is the dot product or just F cosine theta. It depends on which bits of information you're going to be given, how you're going to deal with these things. Friction, last here, is friction is simply a point force. When you do this, you're going to figure out where the motion would be without it. Put the friction on there to avoid to oppose that direction. Remember that on your free body diagram where you're going to use F, not mu times n, because F is only equal to mu times n if F is equal to F max. That only happens when motion is impending. So that's our special case. We did crates. That would be a straight friction. We did wedges. There's no real difference here except that you have to apply equal and opposite forces on the point where the, the force acts. Notice that F2 is not in the same direction as P. It has to be along the surface of the wedge. Our rolling friction, it's just a point force. The difference between rolling friction and not rolling friction is that R does not act at O. It acts over there at B some distance B away. And then you have belts. Belts are given to you by this lovely formula. T2 over T1 is E in the mu US beta. That just tells you what the difference is. How much force is lost around the pulley by the fact that friction is opposing it. We will not have screws, axles, or bearings on the final unless you are told otherwise in class or in the announcements by me.